Um, is Israel had how many sons? Well, oh, you are getting it. Uh, Israel's sons uh, were the fathers of how many tribes of Israel? Twelve. Wow, you are excellent. Moses built an altar to the Lord after receiving the law in Exodus 24, 3. How many pillars did the altar have? Wow. You, I didn't realize y'all knew so much from Scripture. In Exodus 28, 15, Moses is to make a breast piece of judgment to be worn by the high priest. How many stones do you think are on the breast piece? You're right. Leviticus 24, 5 tells us how many loaves of bread are on the table of showbread in the holy place. How many loaves do you think were on that table? How did you know, Glenn? Numbers 7, 84 and following. At the dedication of the altar, how many silver dishes, gold dishes, and gold pans were given? Twelve from the, the group for the use of in the temple. So, that same day for burnt offerings, how many bulls, rams, lambs, and goats along the great offerings were offered that day? Yes! It's amazing, y'all know this. Well, okay. How many stones were brought from the bottom of the Jordan River where the Israelites crossed into Canaan to take the land? Twelve. And there was a representative from those twelve tribes that each brought one of those out. Now Solomon's temple, what was the number of cubits that was the circumference of the columns that he had built? How many cubits? Twelve? That's amazing. How many statues of oxen were used to hold up the vessel for water called the sea? Twelve? Okay. What if I told you no? No idea. It, it really is twelve. In 1 Kings 19, 19, Elisha was called to follow Elijah. How many pairs of oxen was Elisha plowing with at that call? Twelve. Twelve pairs of oxen, yes. Twelve. Uh, when worship leadership were selected for the temple, uh, there were 24 men each with their sons and relatives. So how many people per family you think were included in that worship leadership? Twelve. Yes, it said 288 altogether. So let's let's jump to the New Testament. Is that okay? Uh, if we do that, um, in Matthew 10, uh, 1, Jesus empowers his disciples. How many disciples did he have? Twelve. And in the next verse, he names the apostles of Jesus. And how many were there? Twelve. Do you think it's the same 12? Yes, it's the same 12. It's the same. What was the difference? Okay. The, the idea is that Jesus empowered them to go out on mission. And once he had given them that authority, they now became apostles. Just one verse apart. Okay. Now. Uh, the next, okay, in Matthew 14, Jesus feeds the multitudes. How many baskets of food are left over? All right. How old was Jesus when he stayed behind at the temple and frightened his parents? He was 12. How long had the woman with the hemorrhage been suffering before she was healed? 12 years. And so, how old was the little girl that Jesus restored to the, her parents from the dead in Mark 5. She was 12. Revelation 7, 4. How many thousand men are sealed per tribe to go out and impact during the Great Tribulation? 12,000 from each tribe. In Revelation 12, 1. There's a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And she has a crown with stars on her head. How many stars? 12. Interesting. Interesting. So as God uses this number, is this number focusing, is it going somewhere? And I would just remind you that as we uh, were singing just a little while ago, uh, our, our uh, hymns, uh, we were singing about one of those about heaven. We're going to be looking at that 
Revelation 21, 9 and 10. It says that there came one of the seven angels who had seven bowls full of the seven last plagues. He spoke to me saying, come and I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. Now at this point, you'd be expecting like the church to see the church, right? The bride of Christ. And so he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. As you look at verse 11, here it is having the glory of God and its radiance like the most rare jewel. Like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates. At the gates, 12 angels. And on the gates were the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel that were inscribed. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Where do you think all this twelve was headed? You see, it was all a beginning process. As God was going to reveal through his promise to Abraham that make him a great nation and through him that all the world would be blessed. That ultimately the Messiah would come. And this all happened through the generations so that the twelve tribes then are gone to Egypt. They're delivered from slavery. They're brought to the land of promise. They're given the, the whole... Uh, opportunity to fill the land. And all of these twelves are talking about God's covenant. God's covenant with Israel. God's covenant with the church. And where are all of these covenant people going to be brought together? Where are they going to be united? That is in the city of New Jerusalem. Of course, it will happen before then at the rapture of the church. But ultimately, this place that we are going. John MacArthur talks about the city having a great high wall. And I'm going to tell you everything that's there for you to see. But the idea is it's a real place. It's not floating in the clouds somewhere. There are no people sitting on clouds strumming little instruments. Now, this is a real place. And there are real angels standing there tending to the people who are the children of God of all of time that have been saved. Uh, the gates had names written on them, the 12 tribes of the Son of Israel. All of this is celebrating God's covenant work, the things that he's done in Scripture from the very beginning as he was there and the tree of life is in the garden. Until what we're going to see in this material revelation where those covenant people then are restored to that tree of life. Notice, if you would, he goes on to talk about everything being arranged symmetrically. And as you see the idea is reminiscent of the 12 tribes camped around the tabernacle. They were divided into tribes to surround the tabernacle. And... Again, you see all of these kinds of symbolic things that God was showing Israel that really didn't matter exactly where they were back then. But God is showing them something that is coming in the future. He's letting them see something that they're going to recognize. Those who are saved when they get to heaven, they're going to see in that city. The meaning and the truth and the reality of the things that God had shown them in their lives on the earth. Not only there, but the tribal lands. When they got to Canaan and ultimately where the temple was. And how God decided what land that they would live in in relationship to where he would put his house. It goes on to talk about this massive wall. And so here are the wall, the foundation stones. All of this commemorates covenant relationship with the church, with the apostles now in the New Testament as the foundation of that. And so their foundation stone. Now all of this, you say, does it really matter? Uh, if I was going to, uh, somebody told me this a little while ago, they have a relative that's 
is going to be on a mission trip in Greece. And while they're there, I'm sure they're going to see a lot of sights. Uh, before you went there, if you were going on that trip, would you want to study anything about where you were going to be? What you were going to see to understand the significance of it? Uh, to know what some of the things that had happened in those places. And so what God is doing is in the symbolism of things that he's given us in his word, in the life of the apostles, in the lives of the 12 tribes of Israel, and all these things, he has been pointing you and me to see his sovereignty at work, the fact that he's in control, and he can take the factors of our human history, and he can use the point to the reality that he has been in control and bringing everything to a certain point in time where we will not only know the fulfillment of it, but we will actually see with our eyes the fulfillment of what he has done and what he has accomplished. The twelve gates. The twelve I mean, everything about it. As you think about it, you're going to see that with your resurrection body eyes. Just as surely as you were at your house this morning having breakfast or doing whatever you did, there's going to come a time when you and I Born again children of God. We'll see the fulfillment of what God has done. And we will be standing there on those foundations. Looking at those gates. Going into this place. Where there's no need for sun. There's no need for the moon. Because the city is, is made of gold. That is transparent. And the light of the Lord shines within this place to the extent that there's no need for any light source whatsoever. You see God's work and blessing on His redeeming and what He is establishing and accomplishing. The twelve gems comprising the twelve foundations remind us of the breastplate that high priest wore. <coughs> And uh, although the names of the stones are not identical to the ones that are named, uh, it's still that same concept of now the, the, the priesthood uh, that had been a part of the Old Covenant. Uh, now the authority had been shifted to the church and those who had founded and established the church as we see in the New Testament are those apostles. Revelation 21, 16. It says the city lies four square. Its length, the same as its width. He measured the city with his rod. And how big is it? 12,000 stadiums. Uh, there's a, a lot of people in this that want to know exactly you know, what does that mean? Uh, 12,000 stadiums. I've not measured any stadiums lately. Have you? Well, it's a 1,500-mile cube. A 1,500-mile cube. It's like in every direction. And yes, that's basically what you're seeing here. There are some people that have tried to say, well, it's really a pyramid. It's really this or that or the other. And there so many reasons not to reinterpret or to take away what is clearly being shared in the scripture, but you're talking about a place that is going to fit on the new heaven and the new earth that is going to exist in this way. And you're going to live there. You, a born again child of God, you're going to live there. What did Jesus say in Matthew 14? I go to what? Prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and receive you to myself that where I am, you maybe also. You're going to be there. You're going to live there. You're going to be with the Lord in this place. Not even the great wall of the city 
will be able to block the beauty of the city as it is standing there. How, how in the world does it really matter? Why is it acute? Does that have to do with anything? Well, you know what shape the Holy of Holies is? In the tabernacle and in the temple? It's a cube. It's a cube. That's why the thing is not a pyramid. All of the pagan religions, all the pagan beliefs of the world have built pyramids and ziggurats and have gotten on mountain tops and everything to focus their worship on no telling what. But this is a cube. It is a, a, a copy or a demonstration of the Holy of Holies. And the reason that it's that way is because it all is holy. The whole place is the dwelling of God. There's no temple in heaven. There's no sacred place. We are in the Holy of Holies, in the very presence of God for all of eternity. That quote, 1 Kings chapter 6, 19 and 20, talks about the fact that it is, in fact, in the Holy of Holies, the cube. But as we go on in Revelation 21, 21, it says that the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each of the gates made of a single pearl. The street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. How in the world can you have such a large pearl? It's because you have such a large suffering. See, what causes the pearl? It's suffering. And so you have the suffering of Christ and you have the suffering of his disciples as they have lived for him, as they have presented the gospel, as they have faced persecution. And so here is this pearl reflective of something that came from flesh and yet it was a flesh response 